Vater, so bitte ihn jetzt bitte zu sagen, die Amen. So have today another um, virgin martyr of the early church, Saint Agatha, and we'll also hear about, um, I don't know if she's a saint, or at least a blessed, Elisabetta Canori Mora. She's Italian, if you couldn't tell. Uh, so Saint Agatha, she's one of the earliest of the virgin martyrs. Uh, she was born in 231 in Sicily. And as usual with these, these poor virgin martyrs, by the time she was 15, she was already getting, she was being uh, harassed by governors and other noblemen wanting her hand in marriage. Uh, but as we heard from today's gospel, uh, there are those who give themselves not in marriage, but give themselves over entirely to God. And that was Saint Agatha. Uh, she wanted to remain a virgin. Uh, so the governor of the, of the town of Sicily was furious at her refusal when she was 15. And then by the time uh, it got to the year 251, he had his chance for revenge. Uh, a persecution was declared by the emperor at the time. And now this governor said, okay, she refused me five years earlier. Um, he was still bitter. This is, this is hold, called holding a grudge. So he has her arrested and brought before him. And he was still, even with a threat of death, unable to dissuade her from her vow of virginity, uh, consigned her to a brothel. Uh, now you might remember um, Saint, um, was it Agnes, uh, also suffered a similar fate. Her feast day was January 21st. Saint Agnes was uh, consigned to go to a brothel, but she had the miraculous, uh, they couldn't move her. Like they, they tied a team of oxen to her and couldn't move Saint Agnes. Uh, so Saint Agatha suffers uh, today, suffers a similar uh, sentence. She is taken to a brothel, which is run by an evil woman who uh, uh, runs it out of her house along with her two daughters. So a pretty scandalous um, uh, a circumstance. Uh, but Agatha stays in this circumstance for over a month and maintains perfect purity, perfect faith. So uh, taken back to the governor, uh, he's furious, of course, sentences her to be tortured in prison. She's stretched on the rack, torn with hooks, burnt with fire. And in a move of particular cruelty that has made St. Agatha uh, famous, so to speak, somewhat famous, uh, he ordered one of her breasts to be cut off. And St. Agatha reproached him for this uh, conduct, saying, cruel tyrant, are you not ashamed to treat me thus, having nursed at your own mother's breast? So he then sent her back to prison uh, with the command she be given no medical treatment or nourishment. So St. Agatha is praying earnestly to God in her cell, um, probably about to die from her wounds, and she receives a vision of St. Peter, the apostle. And he encourages her with words of comfort, and he heals all of her wounds, including he restores to her her amputated member. And so uh, this, this miraculous healing occurs, and the, the, uh, a few days later, the governor orders her again to appear before him and astonished right, at, at, at what had happened, uh, this miraculous healing. But unfortunately, and you know, many times we read about governors and prelates, they do convert. It was the case of St. Sebastian a few, a few weeks ago. We heard his story, and, and like the, the jailer converted, the governor converted, the, the magistrate, the judge converted. Like everybody was converting out over the miracles appearing with St. Sebastian. But that's not always the case. And sadly for this governor, he did not convert at this miracle, but ordered her again to be uh, um, uh, tortured. And this time she was uh, ordered to be stripped and rolled over burning coals and shards of broken glass. And before being carried back to prison, uh, uh, prison, she said, Lord, my creator, who has always protected me from the cradle and has given me patience to suffer, receive now my soul. She died in the year 251. So I would say as, as in the case of St. Agatha and in the case with all of the martyrs, uh, well, at least all, all of the, these virgin martyrs that we're hearing, uh, it wasn't, the faith was not just something they did. It was everything they did. Right. Uh, they, I would say, obviously, they were saying their daily prayers. Uh, when we build a foundation of faith, when we completely and sincerely give ourselves over to God, everything changes in our life. The way we live, the way we eat, the way we sleep, the way we dress, the way we speak, uh, what we do, how we behave, everything changes. And it is that, uh, we, we would say, it is that um, integrity which allows God to inspire the saints with such courage. Uh, the in integrity means... Um, whole or entire. 
we are wholly given over to Christ. We're not reserving any part of our life or I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian or a Catholic here but not over here. It doesn't happen. Or, you know, I, I'm, I'm pious on the weekends at, or at church, but then the rest of the week I just do whatever. It's not like that. Everything is given to God. And so when people do that, when people are serious about uh, their faith every single day uh, in, in, in that honest way, then when times, when times do get hard, when persecutions do happen, uh, uh, such people, uh, they don't apostatize, they don't fail, uh, God fills them with courage because he can fill them with courage. They've disposed themselves to receive heroic grace, and when the time comes for heroism, they receive it. And so that's why it's so important to be doing our daily prayers and living in, in this manner. Now, the, the other uh, person for today, the other saint, Elizabeth, Elizabetta Canori Mora, um, she doesn't have an easy life. Um, I mean, she might have almost wished she was a uh, virgin martyr. She was a wealthy, from a wealthy it Italian noble family, and she was married in 1796 to a horrible man. It was an awful marriage. He was uh, jealous, controlling, uh, uh, hated her, her family, was resentful, verbally abusive, and uh, alternating between abusive and then cold and indifferent. And it was one of those uh, like arranged marriages. She like, didn't even have a say in it, it just happened. And, but she dealt with it as best she could. And she had four daughters, uh, two of whom died in infancy. And um, then her husband began a relationship with another woman. Uh, he would spend some time with her and her daughters, and then he would leave and go spend time with his mistress and then come back. And he spent all his money on this other woman, leaving her and her daughters uh, in poverty. Uh, so it was, it was, as you can imagine, very difficult. Um, at one point, he lunged at her with a knife. Um, but again, she dealt with it as best she could. She became very ill, uh, but continued dedicating herself to caring for her daughters and to other poor persons. Right? Rather than thinking about herself and um, her you know, uh, really difficult circumstances, she was uh, thinking about other people, her daughters and other poor people, uh, her friends. And she continued praying for her husband. She did not allow herself to become bitter. Right? So all those circumstances on the outside, no matter how bad they are, um, we're the ones who decide, do I let it affect me? Do I become bitter and hateful and resentful? Or do I let it make me become a saint? Right? That's always our choice. So Elisabetta, um, after her husband basically leaves her, uh, joins the Trinitarian order as a tertiary. Remember, the Trinitarians are dedicated to the redemption of captives, so I'm sure she felt some kind of connection with those who were in prison. Uh, her, her marriage, I'm sure, felt like a prison. And she acquired a reputation for holiness, mystical experiences, and even miracles. Uh, one of her daughters married, and the other one became a nun. So uh, Elisabetta continued this life, and on her deathbed, she called in her daughters, and uh, she had, had, had done a number of writings, and she told her daughters uh, that she wanted her writings to be burned, but beforehand, she should give them to her spiritual director, and he didn't burn them, so that was good. That's how we know of, of this stuff. Um, and so she, on her deathbed, she uh, uh, was praying to God, and she also, one of her last dying breaths, was praying for the conversion of her husband, this, this completely wicked man who had always abused her, always treated her terribly. And a few hours after she died in bed of her sickness, her husband arrived, and he uh, uh, wanted to see her before she died, but it was too late. He broke down in tears at her bedside, wept over his wicked treatment of her, and had a complete conversion at that very moment. He left behind his evil way of life. He left the mistress. He joined the Trinitarian order as a layman, and later on, he was ordained a priest. So how about that? How about that for conversion of heart? not allowing ourselves to become bitter, but allowing our sufferings inflicted upon us by others to be for their conversion. This is a great example. Elisabetta Canori Mora, an example of Christ, right? The Lord laid upon him the iniquity of us all, and by his stripes we are healed, right? Christ bears the wounds we gave him for our sake, and he heals us with it. And so this, this St. Elisabetta is, is someone that, that anybody in a difficult marriage uh, you, can, you can be able to relate to her, right? And, and look at that example. Look what she was able to accomplish. She never saw it in this life. She didn't see that conversion, but it was after death. That's when all the graces just poured down from heaven. 
Uh, so whether we are persecuted by our friends and our families or persecuted by our enemies, right, as St. Agatha was, whether we have to give, uh, um, give our life for Christ um, in, in terms of facing death or give our life for Christ in terms of facing a living death, right, like a prison in this life. We might wish for physical death, but we have to continually sacrifice what we want to do, what we'd rather do, uh, what's comfortable for us, and focus on others. Um, this is the, uh, the, the red and the white martyrdom. Uh, shedding our blood for Christ or giving all our whole lives, our time, our efforts for Christ. Either way, uh, let us live for God alone. As I mentioned, bear wrongs patiently and, and pray for the conversion of others. Uh, so St. Agatha, uh, Elizabeth Amora, pray for us. God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.